Hello everyone, I am Vishal Rajput and I am going to start a brand new series in which I am going to take a mock interview of a front-end developer. So uh, talking about myself, I got in last two years I got a 12 plus uh, offer letter as a front-end developer and uh, I have also worked for a five startups and I have given tons of interview uh, as a front-end developer. So um, I according to my experience, different companies take a different types of uh, interviews. So sometimes in the interview, uh, the interviewer going to ask you to implement a feature in that 30 to 60 minute poll or sometimes they will ask you a problem uh, related to the optimization or core JavaScript problems or sometimes they will uh, give you a code snippet and uh, ask you to find the output and the reason why the output is uh, that. So uh, today in this uh, video, uh, we have a uh, Riddhi Suteri, uh, he is a full stack developer and uh, he have worked for uh, several startups and also have mentored 1000 plus students uh, through his courses and uh, open source. So let's see how this interview is oh. Hello Riddhi, I am Vishal Rajput, how are you doing? Uh, I am doing great, how about you? Uh, I am doing great too. So uh, before starting the interview, could, could we just, uh, could you just share your uh, brief introduction about yourself? Uh, sure. So as you know, I'm Riti Sateri, right? I'm uh, basically I'm a full-stack developer and uh, work with a couple of startups, you know. And basically, recently I worked with a fintech startup, and uh, and right now I'm working as a post uh, post instructor at Explain. So yeah, basically two months stack. Yeah. yeah, great. So uh, before starting the interview, uh, I want to know more about like what are the projects that you have worked on. Okay, so uh, on my personal capacity, I work with uh, uh, basically one site generally, right? But uh, recently, as I told, uh, with that fintech uh, uh, fintech uh, experience, right? I was working majorly on a project, right? That use uh, like that uh, is using the uh, business points, right? In order to uh, send it to the businesses and uh, for their credibility. So we have been uh, working it on Firebase. We have been uh, using TypeScript. We have been using React and all. This. I've also like briefly used. Uh, AWS and all these data and some of this uh, over there. Um, okay, great. Uh, that's a great experience. So now let's start with the interview. So the very first question uh, is, what is the difference between the let, where and const in JavaScript? Okay, so uh, to put in short, uh, I can uh, say like the where was like uh, the primitive one which we were using earlier. But the problem with where was it was only functions. Right? So there are three scope, no? uh, global scope, functions scope and block scope. Uh, uh, so uh, var was only function for let and const are now blocks for. So this is the one point. Second point is that the uh, uh, like uh, in let and const specifically, right? Uh, uh, the const for you can only declare. I mean that is a for constant value. So you can only declare it once, and you cannot change the value further. Right? Uh, in case of let and var, you can change the values further. Right? But again, a major difference between let uh, and var is that the var we can also redeclare in some time. Right, but in uh, let you cannot redeclare. You can reinitialize, but you cannot redeclare. So that is a got it, got it. And you uh, tell about the scope. So what is this scope and uh, the scope chain? Yeah. So scope is basically to put it in simple words. Uh, scope is basically the area, right, uh, wherein uh, a particular variable or a particular function has access. Right. So if I uh, give an example, uh, so suppose like basically I told you know, the three scopes are there. Uh, Global scope, right? Which is obviously the whole uh, program. It has accessibility to the whole program. Uh, second, you have a function scope. Uh, function scope, it basically like uh, if you have declared a function and you are writing any variables inside it, the variables are only uh, confined inside that function, right? So that is a function scope. Yeah. Okay. And block scope, it's basically like if you are using a, a if else statement and all these other things, right? Or yeah. Loops or something. Uh, that is basically a block scope. Anything declared inside it cannot go outside. It cannot has an access to outside. So that is basically a uh, scope. And about scope chaining, uh, scope chaining is basically right. Uh, let's take an example again. Um, if you have declared, suppose, say, three functions uh, A, B, and C, uh, the, the C is the outermost, fun outermost function. You have a function written B inside it, and then you have a written function, suppose, C inside it. Now, uh, if in function C, right, uh, you are trying to access a variable, right, maybe let's say X, right, and X is not inside the function C, right. So, uh, obviously, since a function C is defined inside B, so uh, C function will try to look out for its parent, uh, what is it, parent scope in order to check if it can get the value of x, right? Yeah. Again, if it, if the like value of x is not present over there, what it will do is again, it will look out for the, uh, the variable in uh, A uh, function. Again, if it is still not there, it will again eventually go to the global scope. 
right? So this thing that is happening is basically the scope chain, right? We are constantly looking out for the parent uh, scope if anything is possible there. But that is effectively is an example of scope chain. Yeah, I got that. So you have a basic understanding of JavaScript. So now let's understand. Uh, I am going to give you a two problem and you have to find what will the output of those programs. Okay, cool. Um, so it is. Okay. Okay. So um, okay, got it. So uh, the first, uh, the, the output of first will be your uh, 12, 21, 24 as it is, uh, the values inside it. And second will be your, uh, okay, second will be your uh, the index number, 0, 1, and 2, right? Uh, so the reason behind that is, I mean, uh, it's because like, uh, we are using a uh, first thing, we are using a for of loop. So for of loop is uh, generally used to get the, to iterate over iterable uh, objects, like, uh, such like array, we have string, we have, right, to get those values. That is, it will print 12, 24, and, uh, 21 and 24. Second up, we have a foreign loop, right? So this loop is generally used while working with object, right? So it will really give, give you the key of the uh, like, of the thing that you are iterating on. So basically over here, uh, since we are using an array, so it will give you the key, uh, I mean, the indexes of the, uh, the array. So it will print 0, 1, and yeah, uh, that's cool. Uh, that's good, and it's a perfect answer. So uh, now uh, I want to know, like, uh, did you understand what is event bubbling? Uh, yes, I. So, so yeah, sure. So the thing is that the uh, in event bubbling, uh, let's uh, again take it an example and let's uh, uh, let's see. So uh, let's assume that you have a division, right, and you have a button inside the division. And uh, what you are doing is you are adding an event listener to the button also and to the uh, division also. Dave, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, like since the button is inside the division, right, and if you click on the button, or, like effectively you are also clicking on the division also at the same yeah. time, right? So what will happen is the child will get, like the action on the child will get uh, like activated or will get triggered. And at the same time, the, uh, the, the action on the division or the parent will also get. So this is the event public. Okay, so which event will be uh, fired first? Uh, the, the button the one or the div one? The, the children, the button one will fire first and then the... Okay, so now let's assume uh, there is a scenario as you have mentioned, there is one div and inside that div there is one button. Okay, mm -hmm. so now first of all I want to trigger my outermost uh, event and then the innermost. So how I will do that? Okay, so uh, that, is, uh, that is possible, right? Uh, that is uh, something called as user capture, right? So in that what happens is ki, uh, like this is the normal behavior of the event blocking. So if you want to like uh, start from parent and then you want to go to the children, what you can do is uh, you use that event list, right? Add event list. So generally we pass two uh, parameters into that. First one yeah. is the event that we want to trigger. Second is the function that we want to trigger once that event is hmm. once that event is happens. So third, uh, there is a optional third parameter also wherein you can pass two or four, right? That is for that user capture. Okay. okay. Right? So if you pass, uh, I think true, right? So that will uh, do the event user capture now, and then it will start from the parent and then uh, to the, uh, the children. And one more thing is actually uh, there is uh, one thing called a stop stop propagation or Yeah. Right? Suppose you don't want to like handle that the uh, if the children is uh, like triggered, you don't want to trigger the parent one, so you can also uh, stop the trigger over there. Mm -hmm. Stop the propagation over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, like that's the perfect answer. Um, I know uh, I am getting like you have a pretty much command on the JavaScript. So now uh, let's understand. Uh, let me just give you a few more uh, output based question. This so, code snippet. Um, okay. Just So, okay, this one is simpler one. Uh, over there, uh, see, uh, all these uh, timeout and all these events, no? uh, they, what will happen is the loop will run for the three times, obviously, uh, until this uh, no console log statement will run because this, there is a timeout, right? Yeah. So, the value of i will become three. Uh, no, it will not become three. In fact, it will become two, right? Uh, no, no, it, it will become three. So, sorry for that. Like, uh, three it will become. And it will do what? Uh, it will break into three for three times. Are you sure it will print three? Yes, uh, obviously it will print three because uh, some people might think he, uh, you know, the value will only go up till two, so it might print two three times, which I was thinking earlier, but it will not print three, uh, two because uh, after the two execution, uh, the value of uh, i will come three, so it will print three for the three times. Yeah. Okay. Um. There is one more things to notice is uh, like 
if you notice uh, as you have uh, also mentioned that there is one thing a uh, function scope okay so as you see in the function 2 as you see in the function 2 the where i equals to 0 and from it will just finish all the for loop okay and after the for loop it will execute the function 2 okay now i will be not in that block okay so how it will find the i value is 3 because the function 2 execution contest is deleted uh -huh. What this phenomena is? Uh, no, that is called as closures, right? Closures mean what happens is he, uh, whenever you call uh, functions, right? So it doesn't matter if the context is finished or not. It uh, it keeps a copy of all its uh, like what you say, all uh, all the variable that has existed. So that is how it will uh, work. You using the uh, closures problem. Yeah, that's a uh, that's known as the closure. So uh, let's again uh, start with the. So uh, this is the next problem statement. Uh, just find out the uh, what will the output of this code snippet. Okay. Uh, um. Okay. So I believe uh, first of all it will print two, and then no, not three. Uh, two, four, three, and one. Right. So if you want me to give the explanation also, I can give it. Uh, so the simple thing as I told them that all these uh, timeout and all these functions, uh, they will not directly execute. They will go into the uh, what do you call it? Uh, event calls, uh, what is it? event queue, right? Because all these things it will push it to the event queue. So obviously uh, the console log two and four will print. Some now there is a catch. Like some people will think like uh, the three value statement will also get executed right now. It will not print. Uh, like despite the fact that zero like right? uh, it will get pushed to the queue and it will wait for the uh, like all the normal execution to complete and then it will uh, go to that uh, queue, right? So yeah. three, uh, two, four will finish, uh, then three will come because it has zero seconds, then one. So effectively two, four, three, one. 2, 4, 3, 1. Yeah, that's the answer. And uh, okay, that's cool. Um, now, um, Okay, so that's the cool for now. And now let's uh, let me just give you. One. Okay, so uh, this is the code snippet. Just find out what will the value. Um, okay, so what we can say is one console uh, only said now. Uh, we'll try to do what the uh, executively. Okay, see, uh, got it, got it. See, the, the problem over here, I think it will not uh, print. Oh, okay, it will, I think, print uh, any. Yeah. Uh, why so? Because uh, if you look in the, inside the random function, no, uh, what is happening over there is uh, you are using x plus plus uh, before uh, even, in fact, uh, writing or initializing where x, right? Yeah. So what will happen is, ki, uh, you, since you know that uh, if variables are, I mean, variables are hoisted. So when variables are hoisted, they uh, like uh, they are given the value of undefined, right? So uh, if you only particularly look at the random function, right? Not outside it, but that is, I don't think, required at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that will get undefined. So if you do undefined plus plus, I don't think it, it will resolve to a number. So that is why it will uh, give you any error. Okay, so you say in the random, the very first line, uh, we have a x plus plus. So uh, when you see the x plus plus, at this moment, uh, your answer will be undefined yeah. for the x and when we do x plus plus so undefined plus one will be not a number okay yeah. of course so according to you the output will be an n yes obviously because some people might also say like it will take the number from the outer scope of function but it will not happen because first of all it will look into the its own scope now so that is why it will definitely print an n okay uh, that's the right answer uh, just uh, one more thing that I want to ask Let's say if it is a let x equals to 21, then what will be our answer? Uh, then there will be error. Let, uh, because uh, uh, like, like you can say like in the sense that uh, let r also hoisted, but uh, you cannot use the let before it is declared, right? So if you will write x plus plus, obviously it will directly throw an error. Mm, are you sure it will give the error or the answer will be same? Uh, I think it will give you an error uh, if you are writing x plus plus before uh, writing let x plus plus. Okay, so okay. so uh, yeah, that's the right answer. So if it is let x equals to twenty one, then because it is not hosted, so at that moment the first line of the random uh, it will be undefined and undeclared as well because yeah. at that point it is not declared. 
there is one point uh, that is uninist life but it is not uninist life it is not declared yet so it will uh, cause the error uh, yeah <laughs> so this is uh, all for this interview and uh, this was very nice interview and uh, i love to talk with you and uh, if you have any question for me uh, do let me know uh, it was a great experience and yeah i really enjoyed having this conversation questions from my okay so thank you ridhi I hope this interview help you to understand how interview ask the question, how to answer the interview question. So this was very basic interview in which you just have to find the solution of the course snippet and you just have to tell what is the answer and why it's that answer. And uh, in the upcoming interview, we are going to see different types of interview in which sometimes the interviewer will ask you to implement some uh, like some feature in the given time frame. Also, uh, one more thing, like if you also want to the part of this series and wants to get a mock interview by me, so uh, do connect with me on the social media and uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram and just DM me and I would love to uh, do a mock interview with you. And uh, uh, if this video helps you, uh, do not forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If you have any query, do let me know in the comment section. Till then, I will see you the next time.